line and still have a problem, so I'll get, go ahead and get started. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Ronnie Bratcher, and I am today helping with Recruiting Daily to talk about uh, search engines. Um, and I have a few that I would like to share with you. Um, so let's get kind of get started. First of all, I uh, just wanted to start off with some housekeeping. Uh, everybody's in listen-only mode, so you can hear us, but you can't we can't hear you. So go ahead and ask questions uh, in the panel and uh, we'll try to answer those at the end of the broadcast. Um, and we are live. And if you want to feel like sharing this on social media, uh, use the hashtag rdaily uh, and share it on uh, your Twitter feeds or LinkedIn or wherever you would like to share it. And uh, also you'll get a copy of this slide and a recording uh, after the webinar. So you'll probably get that uh, tomorrow. So you can relook at it as well. Whoops. So first of all, I just want to talk about our current situation that we're all in. Um, I hope everyone is staying safe um, and everybody's keeping positive and things like that. Uh, but I wanted to tell you that one thing that's positive for me is that uh, since I can't get a haircut, uh, I am going back to the 80s and looking like this. I'm that guy on the right. So uh, my mullet is coming back. So uh, so since I can't get a haircut, uh, I'm growing up my mullet. So that's a good fun stuff as well. Um, so anyway, a little bit about me. I am a sourcing consultant. Um, I am a graduate of the uh, Sourcing Institute. Uh, things that I do, I do consulting and uh, sourcing. I do train and speak. Uh, I've spoke at several conferences. I had the honor of uh, speaking on the circuit last year with HRTX. So hopefully if you caught that, they did great. Uh, spent the entire year with them. Um, I've been doing this since 1999, so that makes me like, uh, I guess, a grandfather in this space. Um, I've done several projects since 2006 with several companies, as you can see. I'm currently uh, working on a project with Village MD up in uh, Chicago and uh, working with a great bunch of folks there as well and having a good time at it. Um, I am in Atlanta. I, uh, I'm a regular cyclist. I used to be uh, really good. I used to race a lot, kind of just do this in my pronoun. Um, I'm a big barbecue guy, so you can't live in the South without doing, having grills. And um, I'm a big Pearl Jam fan. I'm one of those freaks that follow them around. Uh, unfortunately, they uh, were supposed to be touring at this time last week. Uh, I was supposed to be in Nashville uh, to see them, but they canceled the tour and postponed it until next year. So looking forward to that. Uh, I've seen them like, I think, 29 times, uh, and not just in Atlanta, so around the, around the country and the world. So. But anyway, let's get started with what we're talking about today. So I want to talk about exploring other search engines. Um, all these search engines, and engines, excuse me, are uh, all of my own opinion, uh, not of anybody else's. Um, there are things that I've been using. Um, everybody has their favorite thing in sourcing uh, they like to do. I, I like to do everything pretty much, but for some reason, I've had this kind of concept of uh, really studying uh, search engines, I don't know, I'm very fascinated by them. I think they're fun uh, and they're creative and they're a challenge to, to work with and things of that nature. So, um, and so basically uh, I, I want to share that with you today and show you how I use them and uh, give you some real world uh, tips and things that I've done in the past. So the objectives today is to introduce you to alternative search engines not named Google that produce potential different results. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to use the syntax and the techniques to use with these search engines. Um, I am a big natural uh, language search uh, guy. So that means that I like to use not crazy syntax, but use what how we speak uh, as a person on the web um, and then kind of go from there and go deeper and things like that. Um, also, usually in this class, I usually have say real-time hands-on learning. We probably won't be able to do that. So I, I challenge you to uh, go experiment with these things or, or follow up with me personally, and uh, we can go through it together uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis as well. So, so let's we'll start off with the, uh, the one that I think that everybody kind of uses every day, right? So I want to talk a little bit about Google, um, and I'm, these, these are opinions of my own. Uh, but usually when pe people ask you to search something, what do you usually say? You say, oh, I'm going to Google it, right? So what happened with Google is they became the dominant search engine in the United States. Um, and 
um, that's pretty much where everybody goes. I don't know many people that stray away from Google. Um, you know, I do every day too as well. I go to Google. Um, but here's my opinion of Google. Google is um, kind of like a dictatorship. And basically they dictate to you what they want you to see. So when you're typing in stuff, it's telling you what they want you to see based on their algorithms. So you have to manipulate their search engine terms to get what you're really looking for and not what they really want you to see. So for instance, just an example, if you're doing a shopping for maybe a tent, let's say online, you say, you know, a Coleman tent, it's the, it will, the, their algorithm and their AI will tell you what they really want you to see based on their ads and things of that nature. But, you know, I grew up before Google uh, in sourcing. So, you know, when Alta Vista and Netscape was around, if you've even heard of those things, um, you know, we didn't have this, this, this massive machine that's been going. So I would say Google is, you know, really helps us. But uh, the goal today is to get you to go look at other things that are not indexed on Google, or if they are, they're way down deep and they're not getting pulled to where you need and looking for. So I, I challenge you to do A-B testing uh, on the search engines and see if you get the same things. And I bet you don't. And um, everything we're looking for today is actual uh, blog profiles or resumes. And you won't see much of what we call LinkedIn uh, in these searches as well. So let me talk about Google secondary one. So everything that Google knows about you, they have tracked on you. That's why the algorithm sets that way. And that based on your IP address, it's going to tell you what they really want you to want. But this is just a subset from the, the news that I just showed you that they know about you. They know about your income level. They know where you live. They know your search history. Uh, they know where you've been last year. Uh, they know everything. It's just amazing what they know. It's almost like um, Spygate, you know, they, they follow you around. And um, so, you know, I, I challenge you to, you know, use a lot of incognito, a lot of VPN things to, um, to you know, manipulate the search engine to get it to look what, what you are. So, but we're not going to do anything on Google today, but I just wanted to explain that. Um, you know, you can continue to use Google, but I want you to look at these other search engines as well, because it's not the only one. There's a gazillion search engines out there to use. So I look forward to try to look at the ones you can try to use. So let's get kind of started. So the first one I, I've been working with for about 10 years, it's been around for a long time. It's called eTools and it's based out of Switzerland. Uh, it is a meta search engine um, and it does search 15 different search engines at once and it does include Google, but I'm gonna show you how to shut Google off. Uh, secondarily, there's another search engine called Carrot2, uh, which is the same search engine, but it's a different UI. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like as well. Um, I prefer as old school guy, uh, the regular eTools, but if you like uh, bubbles and graphs and highlights and word clouds, uh, you can use Carrot2. But I'll show you the example of how to use eTools. So with eTools, this is the, the, the front page that you, when you see it, uh, you can see all the different kind of things here, but I have an arrow over here pointed over here to preferences. So as you can see, it lists all the different search engines that it's gone to search for you. But as you see Google here, and we don't, we're trying to stay away from Google. We don't want to pull it off of their index at all. We can go do that on their own, on time. So if you click on this preferences guy over here, you'll get to this page. Um, and you can basically rank the search engines and how you want it to, to search. So as you can see on Google, I disabled it. And then like on Mojik or Moose or Tiger or some of these others, I put normal, I disabled Yahoo, uh, Yandex is important. You can just put it any rank you want and how to do it. So let's do a search and you save that as well. And then it is, it is set in your preferences. So I, uh, you, and when you get this all out of this, you'll see the notes. I put the, the syntax in there, and you can you can play with it as well. Um, but you know, all these search engines search differently in different in, uh, industries as well. Uh, I do work primarily in uh, the IT world, um, and then I was going to show you that this is a real world project that I did for a recruiter here in Atlanta. Uh, we were basically looking for Python developers with trading experience, either in Boston uh, or Chicago. Uh, or and or Atlanta, um, and we did hire uh, three people. And this is the this is the actual searches that I did, uh, and the people, some of the people that we did that he did hire from my sourcing efforts. So um, this is a true thing that I actually did. Um, and uh, for a clarif clarif state, 
clarification, you know, these searches were done about a year and a half ago. So some of them are not working anymore. Um, so I challenge you to use your own searches, but I'll show you how they work and how it worked when I did this actual project. So here I was looking for a Python developer. I know you can't see the entire thing, but it says looking for, you know, and I put it really simple. There's no Boolean here besides the quotes, but uh, it's put, I put Boston trading and I put my resume. And at the end I put uh, minus job, minus jobs, minus, and that means I'm eliminating any job ads or anything like that. And when I did this search, you can see what I have exactly here. Um, I mean, there's a couple of things that I like about eTools is that it highlights the keywords that I was looking for. So as you see Lee Lin on the first piece, piece here, it highlighted trading, Boston, and a resume, right? And it's off a of top till I can see where it's from. And basically um, when I clicked on that, I got his resume and he was in Boston and he is a Python developer. So somebody I, I went to, and it also tells you the source where it came from, came from Yandex. And then, um, and then you know it was, it was my first result, which was pretty cool. Uh, over here to the right, you can actually you know start clicking on these things and narrow down if you really want to. I normally don't do that, but if you just want to look at the Moji results, there's 10 of 128. So you can click on that if you want, or you can scroll through these. But as a researcher and sourcer, I like the highlights so I can quickly go through it and see which ones I actually want to click on. So that's the cool thing about eTools, and it's really fast, and you can do it in different languages as well, like German or Swiss. Um, if you do some uh, international searches as well. Uh, most countries do um, write English on um, their profiles now, but if you're, some people will speak their native languages as well as what I've learned. So anyway, and I wanna show you the next one, which was the care two, which is the same search. Um, and basically what this does, it, there's three different types of um, results that you can look at. And I just pulled up the phone tree, which you know pulls up these keywords here. But if you did circles, it's gonna do that, or in folders, it, it kind of puts you to the right over here, kind of like what I would like. But it's preferences and preferences. I am not a big, this is more like UI centric. Uh, the other one is just more, more uh, functional to me. So I just wanted to throw that in there as that as well. Next search engine is um, what I would call more of a productivity search engine for me, because um, it's very, very visual. So it's called Peakier, and basically, it shows up like a catalog catalog card system um, showing a peak of what the website looks like as a visual. So basically it's very productive from a researcher and sourcing part where you can see what's kind of in the web, on the page and you can decide if you want to click on that and see if that's the right result. So we did a search and I'll show you what it looks like. This is the front page and I did that same search um, Python developer, Boston trading resume, blah, blah, blah. And as you can see, when I did that search, it pulls up these little cards. And uh, you can see Sean Edmund Burke here. He's a freelance Python developer. He's done some trading. Um, and I probably would actually click on that guy pretty fast. There's Lee Lin again. Um, and then there's Arthur Ho over here. So and it's off of LinkedIn. Uh, I think Peak here does show some LinkedIn profiles. But uh, as you can see, you can quickly look through these to see which cards you actually want to click on and you can load more and more and more um, so it's, it's it's very very cool um, it's more it's more from a production standpoint um, and I, you know sometimes it doesn't work for me sometimes it does I use it like 50% of the time when I'm doing these sub searches so kind of want to show you that um, it's pretty cool pretty cool system so the next one is called million short it's been around um, it's been off and on for several years and um, they don't have a really good uh, directional uh, how to use this site. So I've been playing with it for several years and manipulating it and making it work. And, uh, but I wanna kind of show you how it works. So basically it's a search engine uh, that is what they call more of a discovery engine. So it allows you to search a, a million or more websites at once, and then you can start filtering them out, the ones you don't want. So you can take away layers, you can take away a million websites and then get a better, um, a better subset result. Um, and I'll show you how that works. So we'll go, and you can also use it on your mobile phone and also as a Chrome extension if you are really into those Chrome extensions as well. So this is the front page of it. It's pretty simple. I did do click down where it says when you type in why have you not found yet, that's where we're gonna do our search. And I don't wanna remove any links. You can, you can, I easily start with that. I don't remove any links and then I start narrowing it down. I can remove a hundred sites or I can do a hundred thousand or I can remove the top million if I want. So let's do that search. 
and I have to show you a little bit. The syntax is a little bit different on this. Um, you, you, you got to add up here, as you can see. So I'm looking for a Python developer in Chicago. Uh, so I'm looking for the resume. So with Python and developer, I have to put a plus sign in front of it. So that means I'm looking for that keyword in, in Chicago. And then I'm looking in quotes, somebody's resume. They usually when they say my resume and will contact me. And I wanted, when I did that search at first, I didn't really get a lot. I got like some jobs and I didn't want jobs and things like that. But I went ahead over here and I removed the top million sites from the result. And I got a really good set. Um, as you can see, I um, found, uh, I think I found, uh, I forget, I think there's a couple of guys that I found in this one, but I kind of want to show you just how it works functionality. Here's the sites on the right hand side that are removed. So you can put them back in if you want it. So if you really wanted these github.com account, uh, two results, you could click that back in and it'll put it back in. Um, there's a lot of results here to go through. So I probably just got to start with this, but you can see it took out a lot of uh, job boards and things like that. Uh, the other cool thing about this is that you can't see the page, but if you go down to the bottom on the location piece, I did some searches for Estonia and Germany recently, uh, and it works really well just going straight into those countries uh, to do your searches. So if you're doing any uh, outside the U.S. searches, it's, it's got a really good location uh, search engine on the bottom. So, um, But yeah, look at this one from the syntax as well. Um, and I'm not going to guarantee you're not going to find jobs or anything like that. But, uh, you, but you know, I can't remember the result. I don't know if I did that or not. Yeah. Uh, but I did on this one, did find some people that I liked. I think it was Theroon here that I really liked uh, that we did submit to the company uh, back then. So Theroon Tojib, he was a Python developer in Boston. So, or Chicago, I'm sorry. So anyway, that's how that search engine works. Uh, the next one is Metager. And uh, Metager is a Germany-based um, meta search engine um, that is privacy-based. So a lot of your white hackers uh, will probably not be using Google Bing or any of those things of that nature. They usually use some of these search engines so they're not tracked and they're getting the results that they're looking for. Um, so the next few that I'm gonna show you, that's, they're, you know, I'm not hacking, but I'm just using it from a privacy standpoint point because it's not tracking my IP address, it's not tracking any cookies, it's not directing any ads to what I'm looking for uh, in that search in that well. And now the other thing I like about Metager is that it does search 50 different search engines, which is pretty pretty cool. So I'm getting a big subset. So here's what it looks like on the front. Pretty simple, nothing special. The one thing I would tell you to do, it is a German search engine, it's going to be in German, is to right click on that page and translate it to English unless you speak German. So uh, I did translate this already, so it's in uh, English, but uh, it will be in German when you do go to their front page. So this is the front end, and we're gonna do that software developer, uh, resume, Python, Boston, minus job, minus jobs. So we're just doing really simple syntax. I can add or delete depending on my result, but for this result, I got a pretty good subset. And when I did that search, uh, as you can see, what I like about this is it's pretty easy to read. It gives a little bit of the web page that I can read it as a researcher, store, store to see if I really want to click on it. But uh, with that search and this search, I can see that I got Ned and Tyler's resumes here or his website. Um, and it tell me where it came from. It came from Scopia, which is a search engine overseas. Um, and uh, basically these are two people that we did um, present to the company back then on that day. So. As you can see, you can quickly look through here, like, a, you know, there's things that I would not click on, uh, but, you know, I think PAR was not a, the right person. Uh, but anyway, you can see quickly as well. And then if you don't want people, like, I know, like, you can tell some of these programmers that, you know, when you click on their website, they can tell you clicked on it. So you can click on this stuff anonymously, anonymously and they won't ever know that you've been on their web page. So that's pretty cool if you want to keep your privacy as well. So that's how that search engine works. The next one is another cool one. It's another private search engine called uh, Gibberu. Um, and basically it's a it's a it's been around for a while. It's slowly growing. Um, but they do state that they you know keep it private, they're not using your IP address, they're not gathering any cuckoo data to send you any type of ads. So whatever you're searching for, it's going directly from what your keyword search is and looking straight at it. 
So we'll show you the front page. Pretty simple. Um, if you're a really techie guy or girl, um, you can do all kinds of stuff with VPN on it. Um, and there's some API hacks as well, if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, but we're not going to go there today. We're just going to go into the straight search. Um, but that's the front end of the UI of the page. And when I do this particular search um, for a software engineer with Python skills, the Django skills in Atlanta with a resume, um, I get this result right there off the front. First person uh, was this uh, person who's, what is his website? Uh, but you can tell I highlighted the words to tell me that I should click on that person. So since I saw Atlanta, Georgia, I saw a software engineer and it says I worked on something in Python and Django. And um, so basically somebody, I did click on and it gave me their name um, and, and, and somebody that I pursued. Um, so right there, first page, found one resume, somebody I, I, I'd never seen before. Um, and then you can quickly go through the entire result and start picking out what you want to look for. Um, but, you know, finding one or two things that you wouldn't find somewhere else um, that nobody else is looking for and not clicking on a LinkedIn profile, this is definitely cool to kind of do. Uh, the other one uh, I showed recently in uh, Europe, and uh, it's been around for a long time, actually. It's called Moji, and we talked about that earlier on another search engine. But if you want to search it directly, it, it works pretty well. Um, so it's, it's a web, cra web crawler-based search engine. Um, and yeah, I'm not going to go through this, but it, it still has the privacy policy. It means it does not gather any personal information about you. It doesn't do any search history or anything like that. And all this uh, data came from a, a Wikipedia search, so I want to make sure that uh, it's stated directly from uh, a lot of people that do research uh, are saying these kind of things. So let me show you what it looks like on the front end. It's in, uh, pretty special, and it does some really cool stuff. So um, I wanted to go over here to the right, and as you can see where the arrow is pointing, you need to click on these little bars here. And basically that's telling you how to drive the search engine and how to do other things from an advanced perspective. So um, when I did present this in Europe, I wanted to show some foreign stuff. So we'll kind of go through that real quickly. But over here, you can do search settings, right? You can set it up and then you can set into default languages. So if you're doing people that are you know, speaking in French or German is the default, or if you want to make it into English, uh, you can do that as well. So um, Mojik is good in the US as well. Um, I did put a search string in there for the US, and then the one I'm going to do is for uh, overseas. But anyway, um, you can set it to English and things like that. I think I did this in, in German. Um, and then uh, the other thing is you can do advanced search and you can make it can build the Boolean for you is basically is what that's doing as well. So right here, you can just put in the words that you want and it'll build a, uh, its search string for you. So like all these words, you can put in all the words that you want. And if you don't want job, you can put job here and things like that. Um, and then you can put like where you're trying to look for things. I would just usually use any unless you're working these specific uh, markets as well. But uh, here's the search thing I used in uh, Europe. Um, I was looking for a software engineer of Python skills that are CV in Tallinn, uh, Estonia, and I didn't want any jobs. And basically when I did that search, I came across this gentleman, um, Aliyah, uh, I, don't, I, I can't say his last name, Ivanov. And when I clicked on it, I came across his web page. And when I quickly looked at it, I saw things like, oh, there's his email address. And over here is a skills Python. And basically, I would, get, I would definitely probably reach out to this person and introduce them to my role that I would be working on. So uh, as you can see, it was, it was a true search. And, um, and I did put an American search in there uh, from this week just to show you that it can work in the US as well. So it's going to be in the notes when you get the slide deck. Ah, so we got Bing here. So how many people out there always forget about the other search engine? This is the second largest one in the United States that's, um, that owns LinkedIn and owns GitHub and where when you should be searching on it. So um, I think that you should probably use A-B testing and try both um, and try to get your searches on both because of Bing, like I said, uh, they do own those two companies. Um, and um, so, I would definitely be using uh, being on the side as well uh, if you're not already doing that. Uh, on the bottom here, I put another search engine, which is Swiss Cows. Uh, it's based in Switzerland as well, 
but it is a private, private search engine for Bing. So it's basically Bing in private. So I'll, we're not, I'm not going to show you the search engine, I'll show you the UI. But if you're a big privacy person, you can definitely use Swiss cows to go search Bing. Um, so I'm not going to do any searches on Bing, but I, I did want to show you the UI. I work from home. I think a lot of people are now. The cool thing about Bing is I give you a different picture about every hour or so. So, you know, you know it's for me, it's kind of nice. And if it's raining outside, you get a nice picture. Um, here's the Swiss cows UI. And just to show you what that looks like. And then I put a lot of different operators in here for you. I'm not going to go through them all, but the, a lot of the operators that work on Google do work on Bing. And I put them in here for you. And there's some ones that don't work on Google that work on Bing and are really, really cool. So, you know, there's extensions and then there's proximity operators. Um, and uh, some of these I've used in some training when we work for couple of organizations, uh, an insurance company that I helped build a sourcing team. Um, and you can find different organizations. And then um, basically, let me go back a little bit. So I just want to, we're not going to go through all these, but I put a couple in here for you, but make sure you use the right uh, syntax on being to find your things as well. Uh, you can use natural language search as well if you want. But uh, don't forget about Bing. Um, it's the other search engine in the United States that's really, really large and has a different index than Google. So definitely take a look at it. The other one is called SenseBot. And SenseBot is a, um, a very interesting kind of search engine. Um, it does more of what they call um, more of a sentence kind of search versus a, uh, uh, you know, like a syntax search. Um, and it's one of those ones I just kind of like to play with every once in a while and get things that I probably would never find in somewhere else. So this is the UI and I'll show you how, to, how I use it. So basically I look for how people are talking on the web. So I'm looking for somebody that says, I am a software, right? So software developer, engineer, whatever. And I'm talking about Python and I'm located in Boston and I'm talking about my resume, but I don't want any jobs. So, you know, so I'm looking for somebody talking about those specific keywords. So when I do that search, I came up with this. Uh, so it's shown me 20 sentences from three sources. So if you look at it, so you see it's showing on this guy's website, he's talking about what he did with Python. So he says, since then I use Python to implement a SOA system uh, using blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, heck yeah, I'm definitely gonna click on that. And when I did, he actually was somebody that is in Boston. That's a, that's a software engineer that has uh, Python skills. Second one that was really cool, um, was, you know, I'm a software engineer working in Boston, Massachusetts. Simple as that. Michael, I'm going to click on you and I'm going to look at your uh, resume on um, that website. So, you know, I didn't get a whole lot of results off this. You know, I got Jason again, uh, talking about where he works. Uh, he works at Dropbox. But uh, you can see that he just using some simple syn syntax from a sentence that way people talk. Uh, this, this search engine does that. Uh, for you. So you can get one or two nuggets that you probably wouldn't find somewhere else. So try to take a look at that and play with it. And then the last one we're going to talk about is uh, DuckDuckGo, which is the uh, privacy search engine that does search Google. Um, so I do kind of like, I'm back and forth with DuckDuckGo. Uh, sometimes it works for me great, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but I think it's getting better. Uh, as it's getting, uh, you know, as it gets some, it, it's, get, it's using all the Google operators um, and things of that nature. Uh, but the one thing I like about it is it uses this thing called Bangs. And Bangs is the site command for Google. And they have got 12,345 sites that you can x ray. They call them Bangs. And there's an actual uh, uh, web page. Now I've put the web page there of all the different Bangs. And I'm going to show you how to use the Bangs. Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's it's totally different than using the site command on Google. So I'm going to show you how I use DuckDuckGo. You can use DuckDuckGo in various ways. I did put another um, uh, search in the notes uh, on this one to look at, and it worked out pretty well. Uh, but it was like using in URL colon mark resume, looking for you know a resume in the in URL, and it worked pretty well. But I'm going to use simple syntax here just to show you how DuckDuckGo works. And the thing is, it's doing privacy search, so it's not. Google is not telling you what they're telling you to find. So it's going, it's still searching 
a little bit, nobody's dictating you what it needs to find. So in this search, I'm looking for up here a resume that somebody says they're a software developer, you know, Django, Python, and Boston, minus sample, minus job, minus jobs. And when I did the search, I found two people um, on, the, on the first part of my search. Uh, this Aaron Cohen gentleman and Paul Bissick, and they both were basically what I was looking for when I did click on those particular results. So as you can see, I'm finding, um, you know, some ads here, you know, it looks like, but uh, when I get down into the meat, when I'm looking at the search, I'm finding some people's uh, bios or resumes, which is really cool, with all their contact information and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and secondarily, when we go over to the bangs, uh, I kind of want to show you that page. Um, and they show you all the different websites they have, and they break it down by, you know, shopping, uh, technology, um, you know, uh, publications, news, and things of that nature. And I just kind of put the front page of this here. So how do you do bangs is you use the exclamation point key, and then you put use their shortcut. So like for Yelp over here, you would, or for, I guess, well, Wikipedia, uh, it would be just the exclamation point W. So basically your site commanding, you know, using the site colon command in the shortcut on DuckDuckGo, so it's really fast. Um, and you can see that, you know, this Twitter, does uh, Reddit, uh, but for our purpose, I did GitHub. Um, so GitHub is GH, and basically I was like, oh, I wanna go search on GitHub for a while. I honestly wanna see if I can find somebody's resume that says they're a developer and they're using Django. And in, this, this, in that particular day, in that search, in, in that day of the algorithm, um, I did come across some cool people. Um, I did find these two repositories um, of Nakesh and this other Toro Toro. And when I did click on both of those, um, it pulls up their GitHub res their resume on GitHub. They just kind of typed it in HTML and all that kind of fun stuff. So, you know, sometimes you can find some nuggets in there. Uh, these are two Django people that, um, that I did, uh, you know, wanted to kind of reach out to. Uh, it wasn't a whole lot of results, but it was something that you probably wouldn't have found otherwise somewhere else um, and things like that. And um, ending with that, that, we usually do questions. I'm not sure how we can do questions without the organizers. Here. Yep, I'm, I'm on actually, on. Ronnie. I was able to, yep, I was able to jump back on what's going on, everybody. So uh, you, you can hear me, right? Yes, I can. All right, perfect. So, thank you so much. Apologies for everyone, uh, to everybody for for just being able to get on. We had some tech issues, but I got to get on. I was able to get on about halfway through. So, if you guys have any questions, drop them into the Q and A box um, on your panel, and we will moderate those out to Ronnie. We did have some questions come in regarding DuckDuckGo, asking if you can go through that uh, again, and then there was another one. Um, I I pushed the question back and I missed it. It was before DuckDuckGo, the other one. It was, um, if you slide back a few slides there, I'll be able to tell you which one. It was that one there, SenseBot. Okay. Yeah, so it, it, yeah, it looks like maybe SenseBot and DuckDuckGo, we had, a, we had a, a few questions on, so maybe run through those quickly. And then if you guys have any other questions, drop them in and we'll we'll get them out to Ronnie. Yeah, so since Spot, I mean, it's a, it's a weird search engine. It basically just searches sentences, basically. Um, so what I was trying to find and think about is like how people are talking about themselves on a website. Um, and then, you know, it, the, the search engine will lead me to possibly a news article or somebody's resume or their website or you know, maybe they're talking about something on their company website, you know, so I was just, you know, when I play with it or use it, I think about what people are saying about themselves. So, for instance, I'm looking for somebody that says, I am a software person, right? And, and I stopped at software. I didn't put developer in, and I didn't put engineer, because I'm just going to let that be hypothetical. And I'm looking for a skill set of Python. I want them to be in Boston, and I want a resume. Um, so, and then I didn't really want any jobs. So I just put in minus job, just playing with it, you know, testing it out, you can put whatever you want. And when I did that, as you can see, what it shows me is sentences of how people are saying some of that, of what I'm looking for, right? As you can see on the second one with Michael, he says, I'm a software engineer. I said, I'm looking for, I'm a software, right? 
Um, and I mentioned Boston, right? So he's he, in first, and he didn't show me Python, but when I did click on Michael, he did show up. He's, he works with Python. Um, same way with here, I mean, with Jason, there's a bunch of what he was talking about. He's something that definitely, this is his website. He's just talking about, you know, things he's done with Python. So he's definitely somebody I want to pursue. So it's just basically showing sentences and how people talk. It's really cool. You have to play with it um, and things like that. And I, I forgot to mention at the end here, um, do not, do not sway from what you are doing now to make your placements and find people. You know, if you're you know, primarily using LinkedIn, you're using Google and Bing, uh, you know, keep those, keep, keep on doing those things. I'm not saying never stop using those things, but what my mindset for you here is to maybe when you're getting tired at the end of the day to take 5% of your day or your week to do some real, real hardcore sourcing and use some of these search engines, you're going to find things and these, you know, I'm not finding a lot of stuff. I'm finding nuggets of people that I probably would not find on a normal day basis in my searches on LinkedIn and things of that nature. Um, so definitely. Definitely do not get into a time suck unless you're paid to do that, uh, to use all these search engines. Like I was paid to find people that that my recruiter was already finding. So I went elsewhere on this project to find these people deep in the web. So that's just my recommendation because if you do this all day, you're gonna not accomplish your goals. Um, on DuckDuckGo, I didn't know what the question was basically on it. Um, it's basically just a Google search engine, but private. I mean, it's no different than Google. Um, I think it, it's kind of rickety, but I think you can still use some of the same syntax, the same Boolean on it if you want. I choose to try to use just natural language search, uh, uh, which means up here on the top, I'm just trying to use simple, simple things. I'm not trying to be all fancy and stuff like that. But if you wanted to drop in in URL colon resume at the beginning here, so to make it even better, you can. Uh, I usually start out with something very, very simple, then I progress to harder if I'm not getting what I'm looking for. But uh, you know, with this particular day on this particular search, I did find these two people pretty fast um, that I otherwise have not seen before. Um, I think that was probably the question. I didn't want to confuse anybody on the bangs. Bangs was just yeah. basically the site command for Google. So I just Kind of, I think it's kind of fun. So okay. even if you're shopping, even if you, uh, you know, just personal life, you want to shop in private, I would go to that, that, that and not be tracked on how, what color of dress, dresses that you're looking at on Amazon. You can use the bang for Amazon here and keep it private and not mm -hmm. get ads on Google all day long or Facebook. So we, we, we've got two more, two more questions. I think we can, we can fit in here. Um, so the first question is, are the resume profiles and CVs usually recent on these types of search engines? Sometimes not, you know, so that's where the research and sourcing to, can come into play. Um, so like when I do come across somebody that says like, you know, wow, what have they done since 2018, right? So, you know, well, maybe, should, maybe I will go back to LinkedIn and look them up, right? Uh, maybe they have not updated their page in two years. They forgot about it. You know, just kind of idling out there. Like my webpage, you know, I haven't looked at it in several, about a month now, right? Um, so, you know, I usually just, you know, take that person. Maybe I'll go you know, search them on LinkedIn, sit down on LinkedIn, you know, and then maybe I'll get the updated information. So if you're doing that outreach, right, you know, hey, I see you're working at Dropbox. Um, but, yeah, I came across your webpage and saw some really interesting stuff, you know. So, so they know that you're no, you're not totally stalking them, but you know, give them some pertinent information about them personally. Um, yeah, I mean, you're going to come across that, um, but you know, as sourcers and researchers and recruiters, recruiters, you know, use all your other tools to get more up to date information as well. You know, but uh, you know, maybe you didn't come across that person before potentially on LinkedIn. They didn't come up on your algorithm search or on your LinkedIn recruiter search or whatever. So, right. Okay, and the final question that we can take today is, which is your favorite to use? Which consistently delivers the best quality results? Mm, it's always fun, right? Um, so, yeah, I struggle with that question a lot because <laughs> uh, they change all the time. Like, for instance, uh, there's a search engine I was wanting to show you guys today called search.me, um, and I went to it to test it again, and it's done. It's broken. So, you know, like these 
these these ten particular search engines uh, have been pretty much consistent in my in my toolbox. There's a bunch of others that, that I just didn't show. Um, it goes well, but so like if I so if I was going to go to my five percent of my day and get away from the normal searches that I normally do that are you know yielding good results, and I want to go find something else, my my go-to is probably eTools, and then I probably would go to um, the two privacy search engines, Metager and Gilder, just to get like see what it's going to give me. But eTools is pretty much like my third primary after Bing and Google, uh, just because I like it. I've been using it. So Shally introduced it to me like oh, 2009, 2010. Uh, so it's been around a long time and it's fast and it's it works really good. And I like it from a research perspective, uh, just the highlights and things like that. So. Um, I, didn't, I mean, I don't really have any favorite. I just kind of try them all out because, you know, right now I'm in, I'm working in a different um, sector that I'm not normally used to, and um, so you know, some of the searches that I would probably that would work good from an IT perspective, and what maybe in the medical field would not work on these search engines, you know, just because of the algorithms and the way it pulls data. So you know, maybe I could go find a medical search engine you know out there that would work better. But uh, so yeah, it just depends on your industry. I mean. To me, just experiment and try. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Stop it and go find something else. You know, um, you know. But Perfect. all these, all these work pretty well for me from the information technology perspective. All right, <clears throat> Ronnie, thank you so much for a great presentation. Thank you everybody for coming on. Apologies on the uh, tech uh, issues in the beginning, but I think we fought through it and did well. Um, so to answer the rest of the questions regarding recordings and presentation yes the recording or this webinar was recorded uh, so you will get a copy of that you will also receive a copy of the slides as well in the email so make sure you look out for the email if you see the handouts on your right hand side there you'll see the the actual deck uh, there so you can just click on that and download it otherwise we will send the link to everything in an email uh, within a couple of hours. So keep a lookout for that. Thank you all for, for coming on. And uh, Ronnie, thank you so much for, uh, for jumping on.